Hey, do you know what time it is? It is 8 a.m. Eastern and it's Saturday morning and it is time for Sales Logic. I'm Meredith Elliott Powell hanging out here with my partner, Mark Hunter. How are you doing this morning, Mark? Hey, I'm doing great. It's 7 a.m. here in Dallas and you're on the West Coast. So it's 5 a.m. for you just north of San Diego enjoying life. Okay. Yeah, it is. It is nice here. The only thing I wish that I had that I don't is a cup of coffee. It's still just a little early to get some coffee here. So I'm doing this show cold turkey this morning. Oh man, it's going to be rough. But hey, we got a great topic. But before we get into the topic, we should talk about Sales Logic Live because May 24th, it's on. We're going to be doing this really outstanding event from contact to close. We're going to be sharing with people the complete, you know, blueprint for how to sell, right? Yeah. I mean, I would say, you know, it's been such an interesting couple of weeks with the markets. I mean, economy is going a little bit crazy. Nobody really knows what's going to happen. It is truly time to redefine your sales process and no better time to sit down and do it than May because you still have six months in front of you to turn it around if you need to turn it around, to take it up a notch if you need to take it up a notch, or just prepare yourself for what is coming. And we're going to dive into all of that with Sales Logic Live. You're going to get Mark, you're going to get me, you're going to roll up your sleeves, you're going to get to work. And we're going to talk about everything that you need to know and understand in today's marketplace to really take your sales process from contact to close. And you know, Mark, well, something that is so great about this morning's um, topic is this is a good time for people to come to sales logic live whether you are a sales professional or you are a sales leader yeah yeah this this i mean it it is it is geared for both and it what's nice is we're doing it live you can join us here in dallas or online you're going to be able to get the same content but hey i just put the link into uh the comments there and we'll make sure they are in the show notes but you know what we should probably get on with the show because the topic we're talking about is, am I an effective sales leader? We got a great book. We got a great, we got a handout we're giving people every week now, uh, kind of our, our uh, lightning round. We're turning it into a handout for you. So anyway, why don't we start with the show? We prospect with integrity, we will get customers who have integrity. Integrity is the foundation from which everything is built on. You better understand value. But at the end of the day, sales is a relationship business. It is a people business. It is a emotional business. This is Sales Logic. Well, this and the topic is, is, am I an effective sales leader? But Mayor, before we get into it, why don't you tell the audience how the show works? Because we get new listeners every week. Yeah, I know. It is exciting. So every week, Mark and I come to you every single Saturday morning, no matter where we are in uh, the world. We cover a hot topic. We take a question from you, the audience. That's right. So if you want to be a part of Sales Logic, just come to saleslogicpodcast.com. Put your question in there like our listeners do every single week. Um, we highlight a hot book and we leave you with a lightning round. Those things that you can put into place first thing Sunday morning to get more effective sales. And we turn that into a handout. So all you have to do is go to saleslogicpodcast.com, download the handout, and you've got that hot in your hands ready to go. And you can put those into play every morning of the week, not just Sunday morning, but Saturday morning, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yes, here we go. Okay, hey, the uh, topic, am I an effective sales leader? The question comes today from Steve in Dallas. He asks, I'm with a small company. I manage two other salespeople, but we're growing fast. Plan is to hire 10 more salespeople this year and even more next year. What advice can you give me as this is new territory for me? said Steve over dinner about two weeks ago. Oh, nice. That's great. That's awesome. Well, I mean, I think the most important metric you can look at, um, you know, to be an effective sales leader is, is your current team successful? And if your current team is successful, there's a good chance that you played a part in it. Now, we've all seen salespeople that have been effective, whether their leader is uh, is good or not, but that's your first metric and, and the foundation and the bottom line is, 
is your team succeeding right now? You know, that is such a, a good element. And it's not just that you are succeeding, but are your people. Because the measurement of a leader is not the results you achieve. It's the measurement, it's the results your people achieve. And that's what's so key. I see so many people moving into a sales leadership role and they think, you know, it's their job to, to do everything. No, it's not. It's your job to raise up others to become stronger than you. That's actually what, that's what your task is. And that means you have to be able to mm, allow people to fail a little bit. Now, I'm going to pose a question to you, Mayor. If you were on a call, you're the sales leader and um, salesperson struggling to get this close, how quickly would you jump in to save the deal? Yeah, that's such a good question. I mean, the your gut instinct is to jump in right away to save the deal, but you've got to let them walk through it and you've got to let them you've got to let them quite frankly lose the deal and coach them on the back end of it. Now, you could come in right at the right at the end, right, and say, you know, give them an opportunity to watch you, but the moment you take over it, they're they're never going to learn. It's kind of like years ago, I had a when I was a banker, I had a uh, I had a credit underwriting saying credit credit underwriter say you're never going to know how to make a loan until you make a bad one, and he was so right. I I, I lost about it was only forty five thousand dollars. I'll never forget it. Um, and uh, but it was after that that I really understood how to lend money because I understood what it felt like to lose money. So, what do you think? Uh, I, I'm glad you answered that because I'll tell you what, I love asking managers that question. And when I hear them say, oh, I'm going to jump in and save the deal, I go, oh, you're not going to be a good leader. You, what you're doing is you're managing, you're not leading. Because you have to be willing to watch that deal slip away because, you know, you, you may lose short term, but you're going to win long term because you're going to be able to coach that person. And that's the big difference, because if all you do is come in and rescue every deal, What's it tell your salespeople? I'm not worthy. My boss handles everything. And your salespeople aren't going to learn. And don't sit there and say, oh, well, my salespeople will learn from watching me save the deal. Yeah, but you know what? Coach them on that. Now, if it's a major, major deal, I get it. I get it. Totally. Got to jump in. But if it's an average, no, no. Let them fail and coach them through it afterwards. So I, I love your response to that. What else? What else would you share, Steve? Share with with Steve. Well, um, I think also Steve needs to see is he is he aligning the sales team with what the organization wants to accomplish. I mean, first thing, you can't be a sales leader until you understand what is being expected of you. And you don't know how to direct the team and point the team until you're clear on the goals and the objectives that the organization wants you to accomplish. You know, it's so, so true on that because. You have to set the expectations. New person comes in and you've got to set your own expect. What are what are going to be my boundaries? What is it that I'm going to do? And your people have to understand what those boundaries are too. Because otherwise what happens is you're going to wind up setting up false expectations. And you're going to see people, some people on your team behaving one way and some people behaving a different way. Now, in Steve's situation, they're getting ready to hire 10 people. And some of the advice I told Steve is, Steve, you got to get very clearly defined as to the type of individual you're hiring. You have to, and, and don't hire the position, but hire the person. You got to look for what are what what are the traits that you're looking for in the people you're going to hire, because guess what, those people are going to be the ones that are going to make or break you. Bryn asks a great question here. Would you ever coach them during the sale versus jumping in or waiting until they until they lose it? You want me to answer that? Sure. And then I'll Yeah, answer. okay. Here's the thing. I am never going to get into a live coaching situation with the customer right then because now it puts the customer in an awkward situation. And I've seen this happen. I've seen this happen too oh, many it's times. Awful. It's, it's like a train wreck. And you, you have to be able to sit there and say, okay. I can, if I need to take control, I'm going to take control. But the way I take control is I'm going to just ask the customer a question or two. I'm going to ask the customer a question and get them talking. The idea being is that the salesperson is going to hear me asking the question. It's going to give them a chance to breathe. It's going to give them a chance to listen. 
And the idea being is that by me asking a question, I can many times get that deal back on track without stepping on anybody's toes, without replacing the salesperson from doing their job of closing the deal and really helping the salesperson to look good long term in front of in front of the customer. Yeah, I used to have a boss who was amazing at this. And so, Bryn, my answer is absolutely not unless you've really practiced this and you're really good at it. But I want to honor the fact that it's really possible. Um, I worked for a gentleman who was just, I mean, probably one of the best coaches I have ever worked for, which I'm going to talk about in a moment, because that is something you as a sales leader need to be good um, at doing and need to perfect your skills at. But we would be in the middle of a sales call and it would be going the wrong direction or I would be missing something. And he would turn around to me and he would say, you know, Meredith, I've been sitting here listening and, um, and I was wondering, do you think that we could talk a little bit about this? Do you think that would be a good direction? And he would ask me a couple of questions and give me control, but it's almost like, you know, the way you kiss, kick your spouse or significant under <laughs> significant other under the table because they're heading the wrong direction. He would kind of put me back on, um, back on track that way. I wouldn't do that unless I role played it and I was really, really good um, at it because he was, because the last thing you want to do is take the wind out of my sails. And the reason is if you take the wind out of my sails as an employee, I'll never get back on that sailboat. And you want to make it so that no matter what I save face with that customer, remember losing one deal is losing one deal, but it's building a salesperson who can land hundreds of deals. And it's worth that. It's worth that small step. But I'll add in there, um, I'll, it's such a great question. I'll add in there as well. I think one of the biggest things that um, you need to invest in as a sales leader is your coaching skills. You have to be a really good coach. Mark said it at the beginning of this, your job is to develop other people. You're good at sales. You've proven that, or you wouldn't be in the role. Now, now is can you develop in this case, 10 other people around you to be more effective salespeople than you are. You know, one of the greatest techniques I ever saw and, and the best sales leader that ever led me showed me how to do it. And I in turn did it with my people. Before we go in on a sales call, whether it be in person or whether it be on the phone, whatever it might be, he would turn to me and he would say, hey, Mark, what role do you want me to play in this call? What what role? Yeah. What, what questions would you like me to ask? Let, let's just kind of walk through. And we would kind of quasi role play it. But the idea was that I was letting the, he was letting me, the salesperson, give him some questions to be able to ask and so forth. And it's interesting, but that elevated me to be feeling like, man, I, I've, got a, I've got a real asset here that I can use. And I, in turn, when I began to lead people, began using that same technique. And it worked very, very effectively because it allowed for, really both of us to be engaged on this in in the sales call and it allowed us to really create a better level of information but here's the whole thing the salesperson learned a tremendous i learned a tremendous amount watching john, john yes john i learned a tremendous amount about not only how to interface with customers but how to lead people which served me later on which again comes back to steve your objective is these people who you're hiring these people who you are leading today guess what? They're going to be in your shoes really, really soon. Because again, as your company continues to grow rapidly, you're going to elevate into another position. Who's going to create, who's going to fill your, your shoes? Yeah. I think that, um, you know, I love the fact that you said you need to, you know, that that manager would say, give me a role because there's nothing more awkward for a customer than, two salespeople sitting there and one doesn't say anything. And we see it, we see it one way or the other. We see the sales coach, the sales leader who's trying to be effective and sits there and says nothing. And that just looks very awkward to the customer. Or we see the sales leader who jumps in and takes over the call because they don't think the sales professional is doing it right both awkward for the customer. So giving them, um, you know, giving them that role and really splitting that is, is really smart. And Mark is so right. You learn so much from watching, which leads me to another thing I think that you need to really focus on. 
and that is debriefing every call you go on right there, right in the car as soon as you are done or as soon as you turn the video screen um, off and talking about asking your um, team what went well in that call. If you could do one thing over, what would you improve? What, if any, questions do you have from that call? But do it live every single time. I don't care if you just landed a $5 million deal. A sales call can always be improved. It always could have gone better. There's always something you could have done to take it to um, another level. Some of the most effective learning you have is just debriefing a call really, really quickly. And I love Kate's comment about, you know, get to know, you know, what, you know, what's expected of you before you go in on the call. So, so you're, you're both playing from the same deck in the goals. Now I want to come back to Steve's whole deal in this. Steve, one of the measurements of a good leader is what happens when you're not around. You know, we, we've been talking right now about, you know, when you're involved on the sales call, but remember the vast majority of activity happens when you're not around. What results are your people achieving when you're not around? To me, that is the mark of a leader. If, if a leader can't step away from their business and have the business succeed well without them, then you know what? They're not a leader. They're just a manager. In fact, I love it when I see organizations, when I see a leader step away and man, the sales team just steps up and they go to a higher level. Then you go, this is cool. This is good. This leader has developed people who can rise to the occasion on any occasion. And that's what's at, that's what your mark is. Because, you know, I always say that the definition of sales is to help people see and achieve what they didn't think was possible. Well, guess what? That's what your job is as a sales leader, is to help those that you lead see and achieve what they didn't think was possible. So what does that do? You've got to help them learn how to coach themselves without you around. So this is why it's so imperative for you to do these coaching techniques for you, to, because you've got to show those to them in a manner that they can do it themselves, that you don't have to be involved. Yeah. You know, something else I would say, too, is are you leading your team differently? Um, you know, I think it's the Ken Blanchard situational leadership model. But every time I do leadership training, I always use this model. And the idea is that people fall into one of four quadrants, you know, Quadrant one is they know nothing. And in quadrant one, you need to micromanage them. Yes, that's right. Sometimes people need to be micromanaged. My very first sales job, I had no idea what I was doing. I'd never made a sales call. I didn't know anything about product knowledge. I really needed somebody holding my hand and working with me every step of the way. Then I graduate a little bit. You hit that S2 bucket and I get a little bit more freedom and a little bit more, um, you know, opportunity to lead myself. S3s, I'm almost autonomous. And by the time your best salespeople are out there doing everything they need to do, leave them alone. They're your partners. They're your, they're your right arm. They're joined to you at the hip. But understand, you need to lead that team differently. And I think this is so important. You're getting ready to hire 10 people. Some people are going to walk through that door with a level of experience. Some people aren't. Um, everybody's going to need to be a little micromanaged at first because they're not really sure what you're asking them to do. But I see sales leadership fail because there's one sales leadership model. Oh, I, I love that approach. And, and in fact, when you come down to the individual players, you're going to make, you're going to lead them. They're all reaching a, a set of goals, but you're going to, you're going to motivate them. You're going to coach them individuals as an individual person. I'll never forget Lou Holtz, the great football coach, was asked this question. How do you lead a team of 120 players? You lead them 120 different ways because each person is motivated differently. This means you've got to understand your people so well that you know what their motivators are. What are their drivers? You know how to communicate to them, when to communicate them. This is absolutely so key because, yes, you're creating a team, but the team is comprised of individuals. And this also applies to you because the strategies and the skill sets that you're going to develop, trust me, you're going to develop them very uniquely and very uniquely different because of the different people that you are exposed to. And that's a good thing. Just like we have different customers, we have different customers and there's different communication styles that you do with different customers. Same thing with your people. I love the, I love this question from Javon. He says, what would be a strategy when we approach a, a new customer with a new salesperson. 
This is where you've got you've got to play the pre-call coaching. You've got to role play this. You can't go in and just say, let's go in and figure out what happens. No, no. You got to lay it out. And maybe if you're with the new salesperson and they are not experienced at all, that may be the time that you actually leave the sales call. That's okay. That's fine because that's that's a, it, it's a new salesperson. But define those roles before you go in, whether it be in person, whether it be on the phone, whether it be video, whatever it might be. Yeah, I think that's so important. You know, when we used to hire new salespeople, I used to love them to put them on the street right away because I think salespeople are really, really valuable. So, Jaman, I think one of the most important things that you can do is help a new salesperson understand how valuable they are because they don't know your products. So they're going to be amazing listeners. All they can do is ask questions. So I always feel like a brand new salesperson with a brand new customer, the beautiful thing about taking them out with a brand new customer is you're not trying to close this deal right now. They're brand new. I mean, you've never, you've probably never sold them anything. So you're completely in the listening mode. You're completely in the questioning mode. So talk through the questions um, that, uh, you know, that, that you want to ask and give them the role of asking a lot of questions and say, you know, you'll jump in and provide some answers, um, and provide some solutions, but be mindful as the sales leader, as you answer questions and provide solutions saying, we're going to work on that. If I were taking Mark out and it was his very first time as a, as a salesperson with me on a call, anytime I re responded, I would say, you know, Mark is really going to be taking the lead on that. Uh, Mark and I will go back and, um, you know, have a, have this Mark and I have a couple of solutions and ideas transferring that credibility so that that, um, that person, cause ultimately you're not going to be there and they're going to take over the customer. Don't make that customer dependent on you. Oh, I tell you what, I, I still remember my very first sales call. We'll say we'll save that story for another one. Hey, time is slipping by. Uh, the book, we got to get into the book. Books from our good friend, Mike Weinberg, Sales Management Simplified. I'll tell you what, it came out, I don't know, seven years ago or so. But it is still excellent because sales management doesn't have to be complicated. It is simplified, and Mike does a great job of that. I, I don't know if you got some comments. On I, that. I I don't. I've not. Um, I've not read the. Uh, I've not read the book, so I need. Oh, to I'm going to call Mike today, and I'm going to tell him that Mayor <laughs> hasn't read his book. I'm going to, you know, shame but on you. What, what are a couple of What are a couple of highlights from it? Well, what what he really brings up is just what we've been talking about in terms of how you go in on a sales call. You go in on a sales call by 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 planning ahead of time. What's going to be my role as a sales manager? One of the other things he talks about is you do not become a desk jockey. You do not become a spreadsheet jockey in terms of let's just manage the metrics. Metrics are great, but what created the metrics? That's what you're driving to. Don't just beat people up over the, over the number of calls they make or what happens, et cetera, et cetera. Dive down deep. And to do that, you've got to understand the individual and you've got to understand the customer. Leading people. It's a personal situation. It is yeah. a personal activity. And you've got to accept the fact that you're going to have to get into some messy situations. And that's okay. That's fine. Because that's what your job is. Because your job is to ultimately create people who are better than you. So. Yeah. You know, this morning I was on um, LinkedIn and our good friend Colleen Stanley uh, posted an article. And the beginning of the article said that you can't, um, you can't manage people if you can't manage your own emotions. And, and I, I loved this. I'd never really heard it said that way. She said, she used to have a mentor that said, if you're not stable, you're not able. And I think that's really important. The emotional intelligence, can you manage your own emotions? Um, you know, when you're feeling the pressure, you better make sure that's not transferring to the team. So yeah, really good stuff. I know we got to get into the lightning. Yeah. Round here. Hey, lightning round, lightning round in the handout. 10, 10 questions sales leaders must ask themselves. Go. Okay. I know we have covered a lot of them, but I'm going to kick off with a little bit of a different one. And I couldn't think of a way to phrase this, but are you a good dual communicator? And what I mean by that is, can you effectively communicate with the C-suite who all they care about is results? All they care about is, are you exceeding your goals? And can then you then turn around and communicate the messages that executive leadership needs you to get across to your team? who cares about the customer, who cares about the behaviors. Are you good at straddling that fence? Am I stable in difficult situations? My behavior becomes what my people ultimately have as their behavior. 
So I've got a model that comes back to that comment about Colleen Stanley. If you're not stable, you are not able. Yeah. Um, are you a good coach? I mean, do, can you really effectively lead and develop other people? When you look at the last year, are your people more successful than they were a year ago? Are you coaching to people's strengths or to people's weaknesses? Managers coach to the weaknesses. Leaders coach to the strengths. All right. Everybody hold your nose because you're going to hate this one, but it is so important. Um, are you role playing? Are you role playing on a regular week, day in and day out? Are you role playing? Am I modeling the same behavior I want my salespeople to be doing? Yeah. Um, do you give good direction and clarity on that direction? Are you really, really clear and have you simplified exactly what you need and exactly what you expect? I say that because 67% of disciplinary issues, 67% happen because people don't understand what's expected of them. Am I personally disciplined and focused on what needs to be done? Because again, if I am not disciplined and focused with, for instance, my time, guess what? my team will not be disciplined and focused. Quick example, if I start sales meetings late routinely, guess yeah. what? Your salespeople will begin to think they can start customer meetings late. Yeah. Are you digging the data? Are you using data to tell you the story of your, um, of your salespeople? Understanding where they're excelling and where they're struggling. Are you celebrating the wins that your people achieve and giving them full credit? And when there's problems, are you accepting the responsibility to correct them? Yeah, I guess I have one more and you have um, yep. one more. Um, are you obsessed with talent? Do you have an eye for it? Are you looking for sales talent constantly? I think of, you know, I think of your question here today, Mark, you got to hire 10 people. I hope you started a year ago looking for those 10 people. That is so true because ultimately what you're doing is you have people, you don't have positions. Am I truly focused on developing my people to achieve things that they're going to be able to do when I'm not around? Hey, with that, we want to say thank you for listening to Sales Logic this week. If you like what you hear, subscribe, rate, and review the show on your favorite podcast app. If something we've said has earned you a single dollar, hey, consider telling a friend because it's how we grow when you grow. I'm Mark Hunter. And I'm Meredith Elliott Powell. Remember, when you sell with confidence and integrity, uncertainty suddenly becomes your competitive advantage. And the sale becomes logical. All right. Um, Sied, I want you to join us right back here next week. Everybody look at, at his question. In competitive environment, how could sales managers motivate the team? You just earned your spot on sales logic next week. We will focus the episode on that and focus around your question because we've run out of time um, this morning. But don't forget, mark your calendars, May 24th, Dallas, Texas, Join Mark and I live or plan to join us virtually where we are going to dive into so much more than we have time for this show and show you everything that you need to do to build a strong, effective sales strategy, taking you from getting in the door, having that power conversation, and most importantly, closing that deal. All right. As always, you have been an amazing um, audience this week. Um, go to Sales Logic Podcast, leave us a review, download the episode. We'll see you right back here next week, 8 a.m. Eastern, Saturday morning.